If last disc golf season feels like a long time ago, well, it's because it was a long time ago. In this video, I'll be reminding you just how well, and for some, how poorly, the pros played last season. But before we get started, all these stats were made available via statmando.com. I'll put a link to their website in the description below. They have all of this information and much, much more. Uh, their website has tons of information and is really simple to use. Comment below if you'd like to see a video going over how exactly to use their website. Now, let's see where your favorite pro finished up on the top 100 average finishes from last year. Just to clarify, these are all going to be the average finishes for anybody who started five or more Disc Golf Pro Tour events in 2021. First up, we've got the big five. Waisaki, Macbeth, McMahon, Dickerson, Heimberg. These guys are the best of the group. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on them today because you probably could have guessed that these guys were right here. After these five, there's actually quite a bit of a teardrop. You have Matty O, who kind of sits in a spot of his own, and then a significant drop four spots to Kevin Jones. While looking through this group of guys, one that stood out to me was Nico LeCastro. After his win at Waco last year, it didn't seem like he had a mighty good year, but he still had a great average finish. Another one that stood out is Simon Lazat. On only seven Disc Golf Pro Tour events last year, he was able to have a great average finish, and I expect the same results this year in 2022. Our next group has a lot of young and up-and-comers, as well as some of those old vets who can still kill it out there on the course. This group also includes a couple of local pros like James Proctor, as well as European Albert Tam, who is coming over to compete in a full US tour this coming year. Now the previous group and the next group have a pretty interesting correlation to each other. So stick around, I'll be talking about it later in the video. It may just help you win your fantasy disc golf leagues. So this next group all had average finishes in between 30th place and 40th place. Another one that stood out is Andrew Marweed. He actually finished in the top 10 in five of his six final tournaments last year. Two more guys who are in opposite situations this year. Emerson Keith is actually cutting his tour in half, only going to be showing up in seven events this season. Whereas Brody Smith, has had two shortened years due to COVID and is now looking to play a full tour this upcoming year. If you made it this far into the video, go ahead, scroll down and smack that subscribe button. And if you're really liking the content, I'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up on this video. It really helps me out and will help you not miss out on any stat coverage for the upcoming 2022 Disc Golf Pro Tour season. Now, back to the numbers. So to round out the top 100, we've got a quite a big list here of anybody who finished with a, a average finish of 40th place or worse. Top of the list is Hoop. Uh, he's a guy that is very interesting to me because he sports very low bogey percentages, which is very different than most of the pros in this final group. That being said, if he can up his birdie percentages, he might just be able to become a consistent top 30 guy. Castro is also on this list. He's had a great start to the 2020 year with two top five finishes at his first two events. Both of these tournaments having decent pros to compete with, including Adam Hammes, Drew Gibson, and Anthony Barella. Nick Carl, you may know him from the Nick and Matt show, one of the top disc golf podcasts there is. Uh, he's on this list, and his average could actually be a lot better uh, if he didn't finish 119th at Waco last year. Three out of his five tournaments, he actually finished in the 40 to 50 range. Now, I'm not sure how many tournaments Carl is actually planning to play this year, but he's absolutely somebody to keep an eye on. So now for the sn super sneaky content that I had mentioned earlier, this graph is showing how much better the average finish is for somebody versus the person who's 10 spots behind them in ranking. This graph is a great way to look and see the different tiers that we have in the rankings as I've kind of displayed them to today in this video. You have your top five who are kind of far and ahead everybody else. You have that next group who are all really interchangeable um, and we will see them competing throughout the entire year with each other. One thing that I really wanted to point out though is the group in between spots like 25 up until about 45. 
This is a large group of people who all average very similar numbers to each other. With the 30th best average finish is only finishing on average one spot above the person who has the 40th best average finish. It's a very tight group. One way to use this to your advantage in your fantasy disc golf leagues is to understand we have a wide variety of players in that third and fourth round. So even if your favorite player is farther down in this section, it doesn't actually mean their average finish is far behind some of the guys above them in the rankings. So grab the guy you think has the best upside because all of these guys have very similar average finishes. All of this to say we have a growing group of competitors attacking each course for a shot at breaking into that top 20. Again, a huge shout out to Statmando for providing these stats. If you want to dive deeper into any of these players, just head over to statmando.com and it will provide all of this information and much, much more. Until we chat stats again, good luck out of the course.